The next two videos are going to discuss neutron stars and then pulsars. This first video in this uh, two-part uh, production will discuss the neutron stars and we'll review a little bit on the white dwarf. Um, I'm going to answer the question, what happens if the white dwarf mass goes above the Chandrasekhar limit of 1.4 times the mass of the Sun? And then in 1967 there was the detection of a very regular periodic radio signal uh, from a location in our galaxy and there have been many other detections uh, since 1967. So again we're towards the end of the star's life and talking about the remnants that can occur. Um, the reminder on the degenerate matter, we saw this with the electrons for the white dwarf creating a degenerate gas pressure. Uh, just the general principle here is the objects are being packed closely together and using up the lowest uh, energy levels possible for the object. Um, so these things are packed much more closely than an atom. An atom has a lot of empty space in it between the neutrons and the electrons that are uh, surrounding the nucleus. But the degenerate matter, the white dwarf and soon to be uh, discussed in the neutron star, the degenerate gas has a pressure that is not related to temperature that resists gravity. It can hold up the star, keep the star to a certain size. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, move on to the neutron stars. So we have objects that uh, exceed the mass of 1.4 times the mass of the Sun above the uh, Chandrasekhar limit. Those objects are not white dwarfs because the white dwarf degenerate gas pressure cannot support that much mass. So the gravity has compressed this object and as gravity does this, the protons and the electrons combine and form neutrons. Now we talked about this a little bit with the uh, uh, supernova explosions, but uh, we're going to discuss more of the remnant that happens in this supernova explosion. So degenerate gas pressure, the theoretical limit for the neutron star is about three times the mass of the Sun. So it's a more massive object than a white dwarf up to about three times the mass of the Sun. Uh, however, we really only have confirmation of up to two times the mass of the Sun. Uh, so we, those are neutron stars are known to exist, but not above neutron stars uh, up to this point to my knowledge. The diameter we're talking about here is the size of a small city. So about 12 miles across would be the size of a neutron star. Of course that varies a little bit with the mass but uh, roughly 12 miles across for this neutron star having two times the mass of the Sun in a sphere that's only 12 miles across. Incredibly dense. Um, and perhaps you can answer the question here. This neutron star, the nucleus of an atom has protons and neutrons. So the nucleus of an atom roughly has the density of a neutron star, roughly. Um, why is this more dense than the complete hydrogen atom? Well, as I just said about a minute ago, the electrons are spaced widely out away from the nucleus, and basically there's empty space between the nucleus and where the electrons are uh, surrounding the nucleus. So uh, you are mostly empty space in terms of the atoms that make up your body and the atoms that make up our solar system, our sun, uh, the outer layers where there are atoms. But uh, this material is much more dense because it's nuclear type material, the nucleus of the atom. It's not a complete atom. Um, this, the neutron stars do not have electrons around the neutrons. They just have the neutrons. So they're very hot, tens of thousands of kelvins, you know, hundreds of thousands of kelvins uh, for some of the indications of the temperatures of these objects, but not much light. There's only a few that have been photographed. And again, the reason for that is the small size, the overwhelmingly small size. So this R squared factor, even though the T is a large number, the R squared uh, change dominates things here and we get very little luminosity. The neutron stars are not bright. The neutron stars are not intrinsically bright. They're not intrinsically giving off a lot of energy in, uh, in the visible range especially. Uh, so there's our... Uh, Introduction of the neutron stars. Um, two times the mass of the Sun, about the size of Omaha, Nebraska. 
a uh, little bit small in Omaha perhaps, but uh, here's a photograph of a, of a neutron star, the end of that arrow, that uh, with the time exposure, the Hubble telescope, the, uh, uh, some of these objects have been photographed. And here would be a cutaway model. Um, the neutrons are not completely solid in a crystal structure inside the, uh, the neutrons, but there is a solid crust, and this crust can have uh, neutron star quakes on it, shifting around a little bit. We'll, we'll get to that. So, neutron star, made of neutrons, not uh, protons and electrons separately. Most of it is uh, neutrons. So, you might write down some questions there. That's just a short introduction, just so we don't use up too much of your time, if that's the only thing you need to learn about. You just heard about the characteristics of neutron stars. The next video is much more interesting in terms of how they're produced and what some of the other observations are of uh, neutron stars. So, stay tuned.